Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Vikas CT is what okay let me okay erase this okay why it is called blade loading thrust divided by rho pi r square omega r whole square this is ct sigma is n okay this is sigma now this factor you can reduce it in a slightly different form and which will give you approximately in a you know, different uh, form of uh, expression that is I am writing it in this fashion. Because if you take it as NCR pi r square what happens? This will become pi r square will go off. Okay this will become thrust divided by n number of blades C r of course, omega r whole square and rho. Okay. This is basically for non-dimensional stuff, but n C r tells you the blade area. Okay. So, this is also called C T over sigma is called blade loading. Okay. See you saw disc loading, disc loading was T over A, then you saw power loading, now this is blade loading. It also tells you how much each blade lifts, how it is shared by, how the load is shared by the blades. So, you see two non-dimensional parameters giving you the pitch angle of operation of the blade in hover that is the you know critical thing. Now, I want you to note down because this particular quantity, okay, you may call it blade loading, you may call it uh, just a mean angle of attack whatever it may be. Mean angle of attack actually is mean pitch angle you may call it. I think I would better mean pitch angle would be a better okay, mean pitch angle required for operation. How this value please understand we, this is just for uh, you to know we are talking about hover, how this value vary with forward speed okay, the limits because we know it is related to pitch angle. Pitch angle means if you keep on increasing your uh, CT, I am giving you one rotor, everything dimension, everything is fixed, operating condition is fixed, omega r is also known. But you keep on increasing the weight of the helicopter, what you will do? You have to keep increasing your blade angle, up to some blade angle you will lift, after that blade will stall that means you cannot lift more weight that means that sets the stall limit in the sense the limit that rotor can lift beyond which that rotor cannot lift because you have exceeded that. Now, this is true for even forward flight, but in forward flight also you have to lift the weight in addition to overcoming drag etcetera. Now, industry requires this C T over sigma, it is not a constant with uh, forward speed, please understand this varies with forward speed. Okay. This is the what I gave you as a project because this is a very tricky stuff. Limit of the rotor, okay. I design a rotor how much you can take it because this is very very important if you are making you cannot just like that take a rotor and put any weight they have to make sure what is my operating condition and then I have the envelope well set. 
So, C T over sigma plays a very, very important role in the helicopters, okay. that is why I am saying and this quantity is not, when I say blade loading, you tend to get an idea that hey, you know the weight of the helicopter, everything is known, that means it is a constant you will say. <laughs> okay. Please understand, it tends to give you a feeling that it is a constant, that means irrespective of the flight condition, okay, it is a constant. But normally using this quantity, you define a limit okay, with respect to, I will just draw the diagram, but I will not C t over sigma, this is speed forward speed. Okay. Hover, yeah, I know that. that means how much this quantity in hover you can go for a given rotor. Please understand this is drawn for a given rotor. Given rotor means sigma is fixed, right. These quantities are fixed, even rotor omega r is also fixed but this you can keep on increasing up to a point where blade will the angle you will reach such that the blade will stall okay and the same thing can happen at every forward speed because every forward speed you will find i can keep on increasing the weight till the point where my blade will stall that means that becomes your stall limit to be something like this it may actually come down down, down. That means, the limit you can go, it is drawn in C T over sigma curve, okay. but these are actually I had a long discussion with H A L about this particular thing. So, finally, we figured oh, ah, this is the key, because this becomes important, but how do you generate this curve theoretically? That now, we are going to do it, but we will give, because this requires a very detailed, if you want the actual helicopter thing. But in a prelim, preliminary thing, we can do uh, simplistically. Okay. So, this is just for you to know C T by sigma is also used for drawing a limit of a rotor, stall limit you may say, okay. because beyond which if you go, blade will stall. You cannot, the rotor will stall, you may call it rotor may stall or blade may stall. So, it may come and hit like this if you say, okay. You see, if I go, I am stalling because I increase my C T by sigma gone up, pitch angle is gone up, blade is stalling. Same thing will happen at every forward speed. But how do I get this curve in forward speed with all complexities? That is the key. And they make sure that when they design the helicopter, you are always below here, you do not go anywhere near because you know, because you never know at some operation you may stall and if you stall loads will go up and uh, actually you, I do not know whether you people know there were couple of accidents okay, uh, which came in the video and other things. The pilot was doing a turn and usually you go, you climb, but when he started for climbing, he was actually going down. Climbing means what? You increase your collective. You increase the collective, but he was going down, which means what? Blade has gone into stall. So, these are very critical things. In maneuver, suddenly you may stall and then you think that because the pilot is, that is why it is very, very tricky. Of course, he walked out of the accident in one case, in one case it was a fatal. Okay. So, these are very important parameters in the helicopter uh, field. Okay. Now, let us go to the next uh, factor, which is the basically the torque part and I will, I will also give you a little bit of this uh, twist before I go to the torque part, I will give the twist just directly from here. I am not going to write it because this is just for, uh, if I have a linear twist, okay, 
linear twist please understand here I use zero twist if I have a linear twist theta naught that is what is the value theta twist into r over r okay this can be written in terms of the angle at 0.75 r okay Point seven five r. If you take it in this fashion, okay. Please understand. If you take it in this form and put it in the integral, okay, and then integrate, you will get the expression like this, which is I use lambda. Then lambda. It is exactly same. You follow? Please understand. If I take 0.75 r as my reference angle, okay, I am representing theta equal to theta 0.75 into r over r minus 0.75 theta twist. Okay, this is fine. This expression is this is basically same as this. Okay, I am putting it in a different form. Okay. If I use this expression in my thrust and integrate with okay, this you can do yourself because you do it as a exercise okay if you take this expression integrate you will get this expression which is essentially sigma a by 2 theta by 3 minus lambda by 2 now you see theta represents the angle at 75 percent r okay so why is 75 percent is so critical you know most of the times we say because that is where the lift also becomes high around that region because more near the road lift is small then as you go towards the end the lift will rise up and then of course at the tip it will drop okay we will come to the tip dip etc later right now r if you directly use this expression you will have this because you see if you take the 3 out theta naught plus 3 by 4 theta twist that is nothing but 0.75 angle at 0.75 okay so the 75 percent of the blade is always they will say what is the angle you know theta now there is something called a ideal twist i will just mention this and then we will close that is if my pitch please understand r over r is in the denominator tip angle I set as I come inboard it will go like this ideal twist linear twist is straight line so it will be that is theta and linear twist may be like this r over r this is maybe 1 okay but ideal twist this is ideal this is linear you can't make it okay because you know where how will you take it to infinity twist to infinity has no meaning so, but up to some point to radius because near the root it is all not an aerofoil section so you can cut it out somewhere here or some place then you say ah, I can do something like that I can manufacture so you see this I will give you as an exercise which you can try I can have a ideal twist okay and if I use this my CT will be this expression sigma a over 4 theta tip minus 4 expression is different now you see depending on the twist the expression for now why ideal twist is in this form but why do I call ideal is another question the reason I call it ideal is if I use this twist my inflow will be uniform I can prove that using another again that theory we have to come whereas 
in all these things I assume that inflow is constant everywhere. Please understand I assumed inflow is constant, but I do not know whether it is constant or not. That means I said lambda i equal to root of c t over 2, I assumed it, but it is not true. That means I am making even in this right at the very simple expression, I am making a error. I assume this is constant, but I do not know whether it is really constant or not. Okay, this is a problem. You can use that, but you make errors. Now you say how do I later we will do, now the torque part will do it in the next class. Okay.